This video is going to show how to analyze data from the CART on Ramp Lab. So I have position and time for each. Time, I always measured to the hundredth of a second, so this was actually 57.60. So if I change the number of decimal places here, someone looking at it will know I actually got 6.0. These, I, in some cases, I rounded to the millimeter. In other cases, I just recorded the centimeter. So I'm not going to change all those. Our, your time probably does not start at zero, but we want to make this time act as if we start at zero. So if I copy that and paste it over here, now I can say, oh, what is this really? It's this one here, minus 56.91. So that makes that zero. If, again, if I copy this and paste it down, I can convert all of those to zero. Now you'll notice some of these, do not they're not numerically lined up because I had to go back in order to get more data points. Desmos will solve that for us. So again, you've saved this, this spreadsheet. Now I'm just going to take this data here. I'm going to copy it. So I'm in Desmos now, and I've already saved it with a reasonable name, and I know I've got position time. So I went over here and plugged in my axes labels, the horizontal is time, the vertical is position. Yours probably looks like this. I'm going to go to projector mode just because it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see it on the screen. I'm going to go up here, paste in my data, and I see, oh, there it is. Now you may start with something much more zoomed out. Um, we just want to kind of zoom in and look at the shape of it. Now, it's curved, so that tells us a parabola. So we know it's got to have a squared in it. And we're going to do the quadratic equation. So this is y equals ax. Um, the caret will put you in squared mode, shift 6 on most keyboards, plus bx plus c. There's our quadratic equation. I'm going to make a slider for a, b, and c. There's my line. Hopefully you can see it. If not, zoom out a little bit. Then you should be able to see your line. Now what happens when I change these? Oh. The variable in front of the square determines how curved it is, right? And C down here, that's going to be the y-intercept. If I make x 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, and y equals C. So it looks like my, my y-intercept is somewhere around 0.6 something. So I'm going to go down here for this, and I'm going to say, let's go from 0.5 to 0.8. And let's step by 0.005. Okay, and now if I slide this around, I should be able to get that lining up somewhere around where I want. Let's look what happens with B when I move that. Oh, B seems to be pushing it in that direction. So my y-intercept stays the same, but where this curves before or after it seems to be changing. I notice I want it to curve afterwards. So let's try to make this back somewhere around there. I can draw my y-intercept down a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. How much the curve is, is going to be controlled by C. So let's go, I think that's around 0.2. Let's make that 0.15 to 0.25. Get a little bit above it, a little bit below it. That makes it easier for us to just fine tune it a little bit. So now the last thing we want to look at here is this A variable. So it looks like somewhere, oh, now it's kind of falling out. Let's move that over a little bit. I may need to move that even over more. Let's go to point one there. And that's looking a little better. Boy, let's go all the way back to zero for that one. Okay. So now it's getting close. I've still got my y-intercept right there around 6. Let's see what happens here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's zoom in on this. Now I'm just zooming with the mouse and dragging it around. Um, so now that's looking pretty close, but i got a whole bunch above it here. So let's see what happens with... Oh, I'm jumping a lot here. So we think it's around 0.5. Let's go from 0.4 to 0.6. And now if I drag that a little bit... I can get that looking pretty good. It's going through. This point here seems to be off. Maybe I measured it a little bit wrong. Maybe I didn't do so well on, on recording that one. Um, now I can just tweak these guys a little bit more. That definitely seems to be about right there. 
my y-intercept. And let's try this one a little bit more there. That looks good. Okay. So now it's going pretty much through those. If I drag that back a little bit, I'm pretty happy with these. Again, I'm going to assume I probably did something wrong there because the rest of these fit really well to my curve. Last thing, of course, you want to check is what is your range on these axes? I always want my zeros. I generally want my zero, zero. Um, so there's my zero, zero. I'm not quite seeing so much there. So let's go back. It looks like I'm going from about zero to one. So maybe let's go back up here on my y-axis. and Let's go negative 0.1 to 1.1. Now I can see all those. You can see all my vertical range. Out here I got a bunch of wasted space, so maybe let's only go out to 1. Let's get a little bit behind the 0, 0.1 to 1. And how's that look? Pretty good. Now I can, I'm kind of zoomed in on this. I can see my 0, 0 on the axis. So we've got a good graph. Let's save it again, because remember Desmos doesn't auto-save. And now you're going to want to share this with me. So again, go up here to the share. And what I would like is the link to your graph not the export image. And we should be done. My equation then is position equals 0.53 times time squared plus 0.02 times time plus 0.063.